what is going on everybody my name is Payne and welcome back to another anime review video and a lot has happened since I made uh, my last video uh, particularly back on Saturday and that is because for anyone who doesn't know who I am or doesn't know what I do outside of these videos uh, I helped out for my high school's football team and we lost in the state championship yeah, that overlay clip that you saw earlier, that wasn't us cheering. That, that was the other team. It's, I, I don't know if you got the message. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty down about that. And just like everyone else in this city of 30,000 people who shall remain nameless, even though in one video, I actually wore something with the name of the town on it. I was pretty bummed out about it and I was left asking what if. So to combat this, uh, I decided to continue my Studio Ghibli journey to a movie that technically isn't a Studio Ghibli film, but because of this movie was so successful and is considered to be one of the greatest anime films of all time, most of the production staff that worked on the movie would end up working at what we know as Studio Ghibli, which was founded by the movie's director, Hayao Miyazaki, the producer, Isao Takahata, and Toshio Suzuki, who at the time was an editor for the magazine Animage and had originally suggested that Miyazaki should make a movie for Animage's publisher, Tokuma Shoden, to which a fair amount of Ghibli films are now made thanks to funds that Tokuma Shonen has given to Ghibli as they help make films like My Neighbor Totoro, uh, Kiki's Delivery Service, Princess Mononoke, and Spirited Away. So without further ado, this is the one, the only, supposedly one of the greatest anime films ever made, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, also known as Warriors of the Wind, is an epic science fantasy adventure film that was directed and written by Hayao Miyazaki, produced by Isao Takahata, and was made by a studio known as Topcraft. It was released in Japan on March 11th, 1984, was dubbed and horribly released by New World Pictures a year later in 1985, and was re-released and redubbed by Disney in 2005, and was 117 minutes long, or 1 hour and 57 minutes long. It started off as a manga that was created by Miyazaki in 1982 that quickly became the most popular feature on the Animage magazine at that time. Eventually, he would be encouraged by both the founders of Animage and Tokuma Shoden to make a film adaptation, to which originally he said no, since the manga was still at an introductory, introductory stage and that he didn't really write most of the story yet, but eventually said yes, with the exception that uh, he would direct it, to which he did. And the manga would conclude publishing seven volumes ending in 1994. In the early stages of production, both Miyazaki and the producer Isao Takahata decided to work with a minor studio known as Topcraft because they both believed that they could accurately resemble the atmosphere from the manga to the film. Uh, unfortunately, Topcraft would go bankrupt on June 15th, 1985, before Miyazaki, Takahata, and Suzuki would buy the studio the same day and would change its name to what we now know as Studio Ghibli. The movie is set far into the future. After an apocalyptic conflict had devastated much of the world's ecosystem, the few surviving humans live in scattered, semi-hospitable environments within what has become a toxic jungle. It follows a girl named Nausicaa, who is the princess of a farming kingdom known as Valley of the Wind, who can communicate with the massive insects that populate the dangerous toxic jungle, and under the guidance of the pensive veteran warrior known as Lord Yupa, Nausicaa works to bring peace back to the ravaged planet. When I first heard of this movie, all I knew about it was that it was hailed as one of the best, uh, greatest anime films ever made. And that really was it. But after watching it, I can definitely see why. The plot stood out to me because of the themes that it portrayed in the film, with the most prominent being the anti-war and environmental focus of the film, mainly due to Nausicaa's beliefs. She believes in the value of life, regardless of its form, and through her actions, stops a war, and in addition to being a transformative force, leads people to understand and respect nature, which is portrayed as welcoming, spiritual, and restorative for those who enter it peacefully. This hits me because right now, Almost 35 years later, our global environment is going to shit. If you look out the window right now, the, the world's going to hell. So this was, to say the least, a wake-up call uh, to, on that notion, as well as also adding some amazing character development towards the main character, Nausicaa. In addition to this, Miyazaki was also inspired by various science fiction novels, such as Earthsea, to which he would go back to uh, during his time at Ghibli and the Lord of the Rings books. Other than that, I really admired how Miyazaki was able to combine all of these different subplots and merge them together at the end of the film as he made like 
seven or eight different plots. And the fact that he was able to combine them all before the movie ended is incredible. It just shows how much effort that Miyazaki put into the story, considering he did create the story and that he put into the film in general. The art overall is beautiful. The action scenes are really detailed and the background and the setting are well designed. And this is where viewers also got the first glimpse of the typical Ghibli character designs that we all know and love. As for the music, it was the first movie for a 33-year-old minimalist composer named Joe Hisaishi. As he worked on the soundtrack uh, and would later become friends with Hayao Miyazaki after the movie and would be the main composer for almost all of Studio Ghibli's films. Uh, but I, I gotta be real here. For this movie, this was not his best work. Although, uh, the, the music that he composed in this movie is really well done. It fits really well with the film. Uh, it's the fact that listening to it, again, almost 35 years later, hearing synthesizers, really the only bad thing I could say about the soundtrack is that it's pretty dated. Now, just a heads up, the only perspective that I really have when it comes to Studio Ghibli movies most of the time is when I'm talking about the dub. Uh, but before I give you my take on that, uh, I, I gotta rant at you guys for a second because I, while researching a bunch of stuff about Nausicaa, I found out about this dub that was made a year later called Warriors of the Wind. Uh, it was the first dub that was made before Disney bought the rights for it uh, about a good 10 years later. So this whole thing started on June 13th, 1985, ironically enough two days before Studio Ghibli would initially be founded, when a production company known as New World Pictures released a 95 minute English dub adaptation of the film called Warriors of the Wind compared to the 117 minute runtime of the original film and it had so many problems. First off, the voice actors and actresses that were in this thing were never told what the film was about, making the dub already bad. Uh, second off, the characters' names were changed, most of them were, including the title character Nausicaa. They changed it to freaking Princess Zandra or some shit like that. Uh, and third off, when it was released for VHS in December 1985, it featured a number of male characters who never even appeared in the film. And finally, the reason why New World Pictures cut this movie to 22 minutes from the original film was to change its mar it was a marketing tactic, basically. They changed it from being an epic science fantasy adventure film to an action adventure kids film. And because of this, the main narrative was basically flipped. They just changed it. It was changed from Nausicaa saying that the environment is good and that the environment should be preserved and treasured to the exact opposite, where uh, the insects in the movie were actually bad and that they should get rid of them. As you can imagine, this made Miyazaki very pissed off. And uh, especially, this was mainly towards the edits that they made, cutting off 22 minutes. Uh, he made a strict no edits clause for further foreign releases of his films, especially towards over here, uh, which leads us to Disney's unedited version of Nazca that was released in 2005, which had names like Patrick Stewart, Uma Thurman, Mark Hamill, and in this movie, my favorite is Shia LaBeouf. DO IT! I gotta give credit to the dub here because it, it, the, the actors didn't go crazy with their roles, and it really felt like everyone involved fit with their role very well. And that's really all I gotta say about the dub, I just basically just ranted and just put that part at the end. <laughs> The characters are the most impactful part of this film because they all have one thing in common, and that is that they are all human. Every character in this movie has a reason for doing what they are doing in this movie, including Nausicaa, who grows as a person throughout the film through the events that she is involved in from the very beginning to the very end. The supporting characters are also really good as well, and as for the antagonists in this movie, through their beliefs and what they think is right, they are also in this case, human. It's really hard to say that they are antagonists because you can easily relate to them and know what they're going through. They're one of those antagonists that you wouldn't mind rooting for after a while. Overall, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind is a very good film. It is well executed on so many levels, and if you haven't already, I highly suggest that you guys watch this. And even though Miyazaki wasn't satisfied with the end result because it went further than the manga, Little did he know that, that this movie would spark a founding of a studio that would shape a generation of movie and anime fans, and hopefully more to come. And with that, I'm going to give Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind a 9 out of 10.
Thank you guys for watching my Nausicaa review video. If you like this video and want to see me review more Ghibli films, hit the like button down below. If you want to see more anime review videos that I made in the past, uh, you can hit a number of the videos on the screen. Also, there's more in the description and in my channel down below. Also, if you want to see more anime review videos in the future, uh, again, there, the subscribe button is on the screen as well as down under the channel below. And with that, my name is Payne, and I'll see you in the next video.